You're listening to the 177th edition of the Bitochen Podcast. We continue in Tehillim, in Psalms, chapters 57, verse 2. New Pasuk, Chaneni Elikim Chaneni. Have compassion on me, God. Show me grace. And he says it twice. Show me grace. Show me grace. Ki nafshi. Because my soul trusts in you. Uvitzel kanofecho echese. And under the shade of your wings, I want to nestle, I want to hide, I want to be protected. Ad yavor havois, until the evil passes, until the challenges and the difficulties pass. As we'll see sh- shortly in the Mephorshim, David HaMelech, King David, was being chased by Shaul HaMelech, by King Saul, and he found himself with the opportunity to actually kill Shaul, to prevent him from chasing him any further. Shaul is trying to kill David. David has an opportunity to kill Shaul. But as we'll see, David HaMelech, instead of choosing to kill the Bechir Hashem, the Chosen of Hashem, David chooses to place his complete faith in Hashem beyond the normal human being's ability, really. Says the Medjish Shaykh Ratayf. Chanini. Why does this Pasuk say twice? Show me grace. Chaneni elikim chaneni. Chaneni, the first one, shelo'e pol biyad sholo. I don't want to fall into the hands of Saul, King Saul. She'ime pol biyado ene kasolai. I'm afraid that if I fall into his hands, if he gets a hold of me, he won't have any rachmanis, he won't have any mercy on me. So that's the first one, Hashem, show me grace. Let me not fall in his hands. Chaneni, second, shelo yipol sholo yodai. He says, I don't want Shaul to fall into my hands. Why? I don't want my Yitzhahara to trick me, to convince me that I should kill him. Now it's very interesting. If you think about it, because it sounds like the prayer didn't really work. right? The first part did, that he shouldn't fall into the hands of Shaul, but we see that Shaul did indeed fall into the hands of David. David could have killed him more than one, on more than one occasion. So it seems like his tefillah, his prayer didn't work. But I want to point out that when we pray for something, when we dive in Hashem, please help me overcome my Yitzhara, help me overcome my evil inclination, whatever area it might be. David HaMelech says it in regards to Shaul falling into his, let him not fall into my hands so that I not be tricked, that I not be seduced by my Yitzhara to kill him. What David is really saying is, in essence, because we see from the continuation, we see what indeed happens. We see that Shaul does fall into his hand, but David doesn't kill him, even though all of his advisors are saying to do it. He says, how can I do that? But part of the way that a person, this is an incredible lesson, an incredible tool that a person can use in fighting one's Yitzhahara, in fighting one's evil inclination, through prayer. When I pray, Hashem, please let me not fall into the hands of my of my evil inclination, what I'm really saying is, if it happens, even though I don't want it to happen, if it does happen, I affirm to you, Hashem, that I want to be greater than that, that I want to be stronger than that, that I ask for your help, that I not do that, that I not do that, take that evil act, take that evil action. So, it's an incredible lesson that what Amalek is teaching us, we learn from the story that the prayer, it sounds like it wasn't answered because Shaul ends up in the hands of David HaMelech. But no, in essence, the prayer is answered because Hashem gives him the strength to withstand the seduction of his evil inclination. The Malbim says like this, Mevakesh, Shechaneinu Hashem, Ashiyavar Ahava Yisva Shever Mineged Panov. King David is asking Hashem, have grace on me, give me grace, help me out. Until the point where the evil and the destruction passes from in front of my face. He's waiting for King Saul and his people to pass through there, to pass by. Why does he say it twice? It explains the Malbim. Again, same idea as, as we saw in the Medrash. 
he interestingly sw uh, switches the order. First he says, help me, grace me with the ability to not kill Shaul, even though I have an opportunity to do so. But also he asks that if I'm going to let Shaul live, please, afterwards, if Shaul sees me, let him not kill me. Let it be, and that's exactly what happens. Shaul realizes that David had an opportunity to kill him, and he didn't kill him. And Shaul backs off at that point. It's the, it seems to me the, the initial time when David could have killed him. Here he brings the note. King Saul came to the area of where the pens for the, sh the sheep were by the path, and there was a cave there. King Saul came to use the facilities. They were sitting there. These are Psukim and Shmuel Aleph, chapter 24, verse 4. So they were inside of the of the cave. Shaul walks in to relieve himself. This is the moment. This is the good moment for you. You can now go and kill Shaul, Amel, King Saul. What does King David do? He doesn't kill King Saul, but rather he cuts off the corner of his garment to show that he could have done so. So he said that there are two times, two, the double language of Khanani, show me grace. Hashem, give me grace. Have compassion on me. So, the first one is that he should not end up killing Shalom Melech, King Saul. The second one is that when King Saul sees him afterwards, he shouldn't want to kill David. So, in the second half of the Pasuk, it says, Ki nafshi, because in you did my soul, did, I, did my soul place its trust. It's an amazing thing, an amazing topic here. David HaMelech is asking for help insofar as his spiritual needs. My soul depends on you. My soul trusts in you. My soul seeks your shade, which really means I don't want to fall into a spiritual trap. And the spiritual trap is to kill the chosen one of Hashem. Heaven forbid. And as I'm learning this, I'm thinking about also the precedent. You know, Shaul HaMelech is the first king. David is going to kill. If David will kill Shaul, the first king of the Jewish people, the Bechir Hashem, the chosen of Hashem, what kind of precedent does it set for kings of the Jewish people? It's a very bad precedent. David wanted to avoid this precedent at all costs. We find the uh, Hillel says in in Perkyavis, he finds a skull. He says the fact that you you were killed is because you killed someone else, and those who kill you will be killed, right? When a person falls into a spiritual trap, so then it creates a spiritual energy around him, and it increases the amount of spiritual deprivation in the world. David Amalek doesn't want to fall into the trap of killing Shaul Amalek. If he kills him, the next person will come and kill him. The great, I'm saying, this is not what it says here, but I'm saying, think about it from a spiritual perspective. The greatest protection that David will have in the future, and there was no... Uh, lack of people who wanted to kill him in the future. Avshalom, his own son, wanted to kill him. But the greatest spiritual protection that David could afford himself was by being careful not to kill King Saul. And it seems to me that David knew that. So he was begging Hashem, please let me not fall into the spiritual trap and create a trap for the future. And before I get on to the second one, just think about it for ourselves. Our job in the world is to deepen our spiritual connection. I was just listening to Shiurim from Erech Shiva, my parents of the Rocham from just a few months ago, from the end of last year, from the end of 2023. And he talked about, he's talking about the trap, the trap that a person, that we all face, and how one thing, one spiritual trap that we fall into affects our entire being. When we do something wrong inside of us, it changes who we are. And the opposite is also true. 
when we are spiritually committed, when we do good things spiritually, it affects every aspect of ourselves. All the midas, all of the character traits of a person are intertwined. It's important to know that. David Melech knows that, and he says, Hashem, don't let me fall into this trap of killing Chir Hashem. I don't want that energy to be the kind of thing that's hanging around me. And second of all, don't let him, don't allow King Saul, the second one, he says, he says twice, I trust in you, I, I placed, I came to, to be protected under your wing. So first, he says, my soul trusted you. That's the soul, that's the first aspect, let me not have, fall into a spiritual trap. The second aspect is, my physical body is coming to be protected under your shade. That means I don't want to be killed by King Saul. When Dama Zek from Master Freikov, he compares it to a bird who protects his chicks under his wings. When a when a crow or whatever the, the animal is, the, the bird, the the bird that takes other birds, other baby birds to eat them. So when that type of bird is coming, so the bird protects its own birds, its own chicks, its own baby birds, by covering them with his wing. And we ask, King David asks, and we ask that Hashem protect us as well, our physical bodies, whether it's through an iron dome system, or whether it's through just HaKadosh Baruch Hu's direct protection. We ask Him to protect us. We ask Him to protect us spiritually, Physically, we don't want to kill anybody. We don't want that kind of energy. And we don't want to be ourselves. We want protection for ourselves as well. He brings it from the mayor to Helos. Here's another important point which we always have to remind ourselves. So we work on our bitachon, and if we're on the level to do ishtadlus, which is probably most of us, that we have to know, we have to remind ourselves that the Ishtadlis is not what's doing it. The efforts that we put in doesn't even have to come through those efforts. Our protection or our livelihood. So, David HaMelech says, even though I hid myself in order to protect myself, I hid myself in a cave. He says, I don't depend on this cave. I'm not depending on my efforts that I'm investing and legitimate efforts that's not what I depend on I only depend on you Hashem that even a person or I would say the middle road person the Balabatam Ayurayim which is who the Chavis Alavavis is talking to middle road person who has to do a shtadlus you got to do a shtadlus, but you have to do whatever is in your power, or I don't want to say whatever is in your power, you have to do some things that are within your power. That's why he says, Hashem, give, give me grace, which means let the efforts that I've put in be successful. He says, my efforts, I acknowledge that that is not the reason for my success. I acknowledge that it's you. It's you, Hashem, that's doing it for me. And this is an important point because we always have to remind ourselves if we put in efforts, it's not the efforts. Yes, sometimes our efforts do seem to be, the, to, to be that which results in our success. But let's not make the mistake and think that that's, that's where it's really coming from. It's really coming from Hashem. It says the al Sheikh. Well, Avala Alashenis, he's explaining the second time he says Khaneni. Khaneni be'ene shol, penya'ara gizgufi, similar to what we saw in the Malbim. Give me grace in the eyes of shol, lest he kill me physically. Ni'emratam shahu, kiyubitzel kanafecha, elikim aniskar. The reason is, why do I have a right, so to speak, to request grace from you, and that you shouldn't be able to hurt me? 
The reason I feel I have that right to request it is because I trusted in you, Hashem. I trusted in you. And it's the name Elohim, which denotes uh, judgment, which means Mida Kenegan Mida, Shata, Mimidas Hadin Miasreni Bitsar, Bricha, Chayetze I acknowledge, as we saw in previous podcasts, I acknowledge that the challenges that are coming upon me are a result of something that I've done wrong. I have to be running away. I have to be on the run. I trust in you that you are going to take away the evil that I've done. My sins. And so according to the al what he's saying is, I will nestle into your shade. I'll be protected by your shade until the evil that I've done has passed, until the evil that I've done is paid off, so to speak. This is very important because, you know, sometimes we endure difficulties and we feel like it's going to go on forever, but it doesn't go on forever. There's always an end. There's always a point where we've paid off, we've paid our dues, so to speak. What he's saying is that there's always an end to the difficulties that a person has to endure to pay off the things that he's done wrong. Once the sin is finished, once there's nothing left of the sin, so then I don't need to be afraid anymore of my physical enemies. Right, here's an important point. As when Rosh Hashiva says, he used to say that you know, we got to work on our bitachin when the things are not so difficult, so that we'll have it in our pocket to be able to use when things are challenging. But Rabbi Avram ben Ramach says a slightly different idea, and that is that David Melch says, I didn't just turn to you for help when the going got tough. I've trusted in you even before this. I always trusted in you. And even now, when I'm in the, excuse me, the greatest troubles, I turn to you and ask for your help. And I'm going to trust in you until the, the entire episode is over, until this difficulty is finished, until Shalom Melech no longer is trying to hurt me, until he's no longer chasing after me. Says the Svorno, Chaneni, tenli chua miyad shol ato. Give me grace, have compassion on me, give me salvation from the hands of Shol right now. Chaneni, kimekin l'asid. And give me help for the future as well. Ki b'chach asayi anavshi me'oidi. Because I always trusted in you. So Devin Welk is talking about the past, the present, and the future. Save me now, save me in the future. I've always trusted in you. Okay, he's talking about all times of and I will always trust in you in the future. At Yavar voice until the troubles pass. to the point where King Saul's chasing me is finished. So I was thinking as I was preparing this that there's an important idea here as well that when a person is in the midst of a difficult situation. You know, it's amazing because David HaMelech is praying about the future. Hashem, save me now and save me in the future. What is he talking about? Just worry about now. But I was thinking that when a person is in the middle of a challenge, that's a good time to, to start praying about other things. Don't just pray about your current challenge. You're in a moment of challenge and your prayers are it's sincere and heartfelt because, because of the challenge. Turn now to Hashem and ask Him for help in other areas of your life. So it seems David is doing, according to this pshat. According to Sforno, he's saying, help me now, help me in the future. I trusted in you in the past. I will trust you in the future. And I trust you now. Okay? And finally here, the Nefutzes Yehuda says like this, Hashem spreads over us protection. He spreads over us his divine cloud of protection to save us from all bad. 
And we can be assured that we'll be protected here in this realm and in the future. In the future realm. Hashem always protects us. That's the true essence of who He is. That's what the Pasuk, our Pasuk says. That I will nestle under your wing. He says a slightly different idea. The Pasuk is instructing us to be like shade. Following Hashem like, the, like a shadow. Shadowing God. What does it mean? I'm trying to do Hashem's will. I'm following after God like a shadow. Trying to do Hashem's will. Just like the shade moves as the person whose shade is cast moves. So when we say we're going to try to be your shadow, Hashem, help us try to shadow you and do your will and, and, and follow after you, just like a, a, a shadow follows the person. And then, what's the result? Midah keneged midah. Hashem is our shade by our right side. He does for us what we did, as it were, for Him. And then our prayer is, David HaMelech's prayer is, that Hashem will protect us and be by our side, just as we have we strive to be by the side of Hashem following Hashem's will. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you again next time.